Acha mi bila faham Kuwa ni yako zam Angala Unge niambia eti unakam Nitulize ham wangu wa dhati Tama zangu zime ni kwa mia Mikononi Thank you. 
If you want to go to the
Gado, you do a kaida karea to koreto nave, to koaridia ruka. Na ne joe, ne korago, moke, gua koreo korori, or no koro do rio, do rihaha. Nidaso kia gado, you do a kaida karea to koreto nave. Nidaso kia gado, you do a mau do mariamo, the oji kaide. Ne oje keire maige, na ne dera riri kana mudenya tuare na weha ha, e de aba videi ya kwa, inda gueti re, wena iwa bura do gueto ojo William, na gemoera niye na do guo, ne moeto e keire mau do malaya makora guo, makere do mosiari eko. Kutiri odo moti geti ya. Da kuerire moige ine wandu. Na kedo ke unendera iguwa ke geneti ya muno. Ni odo ni waigwire ono gezi ya teni tukura goo tukene teniwe. Sasa ile kitu ingine nataka kuenda kukuambia. Nembira nilikuwa ni mefurahi. Kwa... Mwakati mzee yangu alikuwa mgonjwa. Luka joroge nani? Ulifanya ile maneno siwezi kuelewa. Ile maneno nafanya ilikuwa mzuri. Mzee aliamka asubuhi ni mgonjwa. Hii nyumba hakuna peni hata kidogo. Kaniambia mama ma, 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 mimi Nasikia kama ni mgojwa. Unaweza sungumusa na rafiki yako kinyata. Umuabie atubuku huko. Siku msungumzia rakini. Nika muambia tuende hospitali hapa mata. Kufika hapo, nika sukua simu. Nika kupigia kijana yangu. God is good. Sasa uriniambia mbia. Ni kupatia ndaka kumi kwa sababu hata kesi hile mulikuwa nae imeharishwa ite nea siku ingine. Uli niambia ni kupatia ten days, ten time, ten minutes na ikifika ulikuwa hapo. Uka niambia baba nataka kufanyuo shake up thoroughly, si hivo tu. Ukaseo kasungumza na daktari na kakututuma kwa daktari mwingine. Kufika hapo kwa daktari mwingine naona na kutoa bahali nilikuwa na mze. Haka kupeleka kado. Nilikuuliza ni kitu gani naenderea. Uka niambia, ah, mami. Nipe, ni, walikuwa na niambia ati deposit tena nini ni meatatu. Lakini, iko na... 150 hapa. Na hizo zingine hiko kwa mbanki. Usisi tuke kila kitu ni sawa. Ukaenda hospitali nuka nipatia pesa ya kuenda kununui ya baba yako. Nguo sijui na hii ingine ya konyo wa ndevu. Siripas. Nika kukuta hospitali. Saira nilisema. Nika kuambia sita wasa mzee. Kaniambia utanisungumzi, uta, wacha mamini kurete nasi. Kakwabia pana, mi nataka nasi nyumbani, lakini baba nataka kujiangaliria. Sasa tulikatu, lakini wakati ya kutoka, diyo nirijua iyo siile ulikuwa na nierezea. Kushukua biro, it is almost two million. Kakwabia iyo biro sietu. Kaniambia ni yetu lakini siku kuerezea na hakuna kitu ni melipa kila kitu mamu. Nilikuwa na pesa ni mesifu kwa mbank na kwa hile nini. Na ni metoa kwa sababu nilikuwa nataka kujenga nyumba. Nikasema nitajenga bamba bere ya nyumba. Nilistuka lakini siku wa sababu ya pesa nilikuwa na uliza. 
Hiyo pesa zote tungitoa wapi? Uliniambia baba yako hawezi kupatiwa e, harabi na watu na wewe uko na pesa. Hiyo uzuri yako ni shida. Lakini tukaendelea hivi. Hata kila kitu kipatio ya matuda nini unalete? Umetusaidia na mzee wakati alikuwa mzuri alikuwa anataka kwenda ngambo. Ulimwambia ukipata visa nitakusaidia na kila kitu uende. After one year mzee alikuwa anataka kwenda ngambo akiwa kijana kusoma lakini hakwenda. Kila saa anasema yeye ni mungu, ni mwe ni Muamerika. Sasa akasema wacha dadi aende akapumzike kwa sababu alikuwa mgonjwa. Kijana nimeshidwa na uzuri yako nikafurahi kwa sababu hiyo yote unafanya. Matoto ukachukua yote. Mimi sina kazi ya kufanya. Kashukua kijana ya kwanza na nisaire tu umekuwa umeandikwa kazi. Kashukua mtoto alikuwa form, eh, alikuwa standard 8 kaniambia huyu mama usisugurike naye hao wengine the same kijana ukaniondolea mzigo kaondolea baba yako kaweka zote kwa eh, kwa shiandaine shiaku nie dili odo ingehota gukwira no jokirie gatho ni undu ni joe di di ona di hot di la hota kwalia sasa hiyo yote ulifanya kwa upendo yako mimi ndio huyu nikawa mgonjwa pia unanilete hapa nimekaa kaniambia mam naona unakuwa mzuri sana kuja nikupeleke ukanipeleka kwa ngari kaniambia mami nataka just on the point one ka nataka kukununulia ewe gari mimi sitake ukae nyumbani so nataka ukatoka kuenda kuona wakira mama na ukaendaga ile mambo yako nataka kuenda kufanya na ukabemba wakira as people different people knew him differently he passed on on the 14th a day like today last week and as by his wishes we committed him the following day on the 15th and therefore today we are here gathered to mourn him honor him and celebrate him because he touched each one of you in a very different way let me take this opportunity to request one man who is his brother and who is older than him called Willie Willie took care of Nani from the time he was diagnosed with this problem until he breathed his last. Willie can have the honor of coming over and giving a tribute. Thank you. Please. Flo can do it on your behalf. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Florence Mwai, I am Willie's wife and the mother to Peter and Michelle, so Njoroge was my brother-in-law. I'm going to read Willie's tribute as he wrote it. Luca, to me, you are not gone or forgotten. You live in your daughter, in whose face I see you. You live in the many selfless things you did and the plans you laid down for our family. You are there for everyone, and I thank God for the opportunity that I had to be there for you when you were unwell. Many people have talked about your exemplary professional life. 
but to the Mungais, you are simply the beloved Luca or Uncle Njoro, unmatched. We are comforted that you have left a legacy larger than life. You are not only my brother, but my friend. While I was away for many years, I came back to find that you had become the father to all our nieces and our nephews. And it's at this point, I would like the other nephews and nieces to stand up so everybody can see the nephews and nieces that Uncle Njero took care of. For the nephews and nieces, please. Thank you. Shiko, thank you for sharing your dad with our children. Um, um, those nephews included Willie's own children and my own children, Junior and Shiko despite being my younger brother. Each of these will have fond memories and keepsakes collected over the years for the love you showed them and the life lessons you taught them. Rest now, my brother, rest. I make a promise to continue to respect what you stood for, what you cherished. I promise to take care of Shiko as best as I can. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, May he rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he Thank you so much, Flo. Um, today's a long, a long, long uh, list of tributes, and yet we have very little time. So I request all our speakers to take as little time as possible uh, and I've allocated them at least two minutes because by 11 o'clock we will start the service. Uh, Nani was blessed with uh, a daughter, Wanjiko Njoroge. But now she's a big girl, it's my daughter. Uh, and what I urge all of you is a good moment for you to embrace her as one of your own. Never allow her to go astray. Create time for her as much as you can. You have become her aunties. You have now become her uncles and a father, and some of us her grandfather. So Wanjiko is a moment, and hopefully you get someone to help you out to come over and read your tribute for your dear dad. Karibu. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Dear Dad, your life was a blessing, your memory a, tre a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. I am heartbroken. I will not get to experience various milestones with you by my side. But I gain comfort in knowing everything you did, you did intentionally. You have prepared me for this journey, and I will not disappoint you. To be in your presence was an experience to relish. You're the most intelligent, generous, hardworking, eclectic, and most autonomous man I have had the honor of experiencing. I have always admired your authenticity the most. You have shown me what it truly means to live a meaningful and happy life without compromising your own happiness, attempting to please others. I cannot wait to tell my children endless stories about the amazing Guka, narrating to them his immense love for the arts, all the plays he would watch, his love for reading, oh, what an incredible library he had in his home, filled with books from every country he visited, all his scenic adventures, his solo trips in his breathtaking matte black caravan, 
All he wanted to do is see the world. But most of all, his generosity and the love he had for his family, he gave without bias. You have raised a strong daughter. I will take care of myself like you always wished. I can go on and on, but for now know that as tears flow from our eyes, with hearts heavy with the weight of losing you, we will always celebrate your life because you have taught us the true meaning of living. Dad, my mind still talks to you. My heart still looks for you. My soul knows you're at peace. I love you in this life. Peace. Thank you. Thank you, Shiko. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard, uh, but I'm sure you'll be strong. And I pray that all of us, we are praying for this family. We are praying for Shiko. We are praying for Willie's mom and the entire family. And I'm sure you're also praying for us because the gap which has left, uh, no one can be able to cover it. Uh, Nani came from a very big family. And we had a struggle trying to pick out who need to talk on behalf of the bigger family and because of the constant of time the family guided us and requested us to give an opportunity to Nani's favorite uncle called Joseph Ngige Njoroge so if he's around Uncle Ngige if you're around uh, that would be excellent uh, Uncle Ngige Catherine will read the eulogy, I mean the tribute, on behalf of Uncle Gigi. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Catherine, um, Uncle Joe's daughter, and I will read a tribute from Nani's uncles and aunties. Luca, as we call him in the family, is our sister's Nyinawawili, as we call her, second-born son who is named after our father, Nani Jorogewa Kimani. From an early age, he was an obedient and respectful young man who has always been very hardworking. He was the first attorney in the family and always willing to mentor his cousins and to share his knowledge with them. I urge our children to emulate this and to keep lighting the candles Luca lit. Luca's kindness will never be forgotten. We can never forget how he helped our sister, the late Margaret Wairimo, and her family back on their feet when their home was burnt down during the post-election violence in 2007. We will never forget how he came through for the family of our late brother Stephen Kemani when he passed away. We will never forget how he was there in the hospital ward with our brother, the late James Kemani, when he breathed, he breathed his last and how he even cleared the hospital bill. We will never forget how he always chipped in in a big way during our children's wedding. His bahasha was always a heavy one in dollars. These are some of the many, many things he did. Luca was a kind man, and his love for family was admirable. Luca, your star shines so bright, and it continues shining. We love you, Luca. Go well, Luca. Go well, son. You will always be in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Uncle Joe. Uh, let's have the clip for Mom, if it's ready. Uh, Mom's tribute. Jeroge's Mom tribute. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Nirasu kia gado Ndu waka hida karea Tukoreto wa maa Na igari Lakini kukata Nirasu kia gado Ndu wa maa udu marea maa Udu kire Udu kire maige Na nidira hivika na Udu nyatuari na we haa Udu ya bagu Nirasu kia gado Nda wikire Nirasu kia gado Mwenyewe ni mwetue keire maudu marea makoragu makiedu wa musiari eko kutiri odu motigetie da kuerile muige ini wandu na kedu ke unendera igu wa kege netie muno ni odu ni waiguire onoge viate ni tukoragu wa tukenete niwe sasa ile kitu ingine nataka kuenda kukuambia Nibira nilikuwa nimefurahi kwa mwakati mzee yangu alikuwa mgonjwa. Luka Joroge nani? Ulifanya ile maneno siwezi kuelewa. Ile maneno nafanya ilikuwa mzuri. Mzee aliamka asubuhi ni mgonjwa. Hii nyumba hakuna peni hata kidogo. Kaniambia mama mimi nasikia kama ni mgojwa. Unaweza sungumusa na rafiki yako kinyata, umuabie atobuku huko. Siku msungumzia rakini, nika muambia tuende hospitali hapa mata. Kufika hapo, nika sukua simu, nika kupigia kijana yangu. God is good. Sasa uri niambia ni kupatia ndaka kumi kwa sababu hata kesi hile mulikuwa nae imeharishwa ite nia siku ingine. Uri niambia ni kupatia ten days, ten time, ten minutes na ikifika ulikuwa hapo. Uka niambia baba nataka kufanyuo shake up thoroughly. Si hivyo tu. Ukaseo kasungumza na daktari na kakututuma kwa daktari mwingine. Kufika hapo kwa daktari mwingine naona na kutoa bahali nilikuwa na mze. Haka kupeleka kado. Nilikuuliza ni kitu gani naendelea. Ukaniambia, ah, mami. Walikuwa na niambia ati deposite na nini ni meatatu. Lakini... Iko na 150 hapa. Na hizo zingine iko kwa mbanki. Usisi tuke kila kitu ni sawa. Ukaenda hospitali ni wakanipatia pesa ya kuenda kununuia baba yako. Nguo sijui na hii ingine ya kunyo andevu. Siripas. Nika kukuta hospitali. Saira nilisema. Nika kuambia sita wasa mze. Kaniambia utanisungumzi, wacha mamini kurete nasi. Kakwabia pana, mi nataka nasi nyumbani, lakini baba nataka kujiangaliria. Sasa tulikatu, lakini wakati ya kutoka, diyo nirijua iyo siile ulikuwa na nierezea. Kushukua biro, it is almost 2 million. Kakwabia iyo biro sietu. Kaniambia ni yetu lakini siku kuerezea na hakuna kitu ni melipa kila kitu mamu. Nilikuwa na pesa ni mesifu kwa mbank na kwa hile nini. Na ni metoa kwa sababu nilikuwa nataka kujenga nyumba. Nikasema nitajenga bamba bere ya nyumba. Nilistuka lakini siku wa sababu ya pesa nilikuwa na uliza. Iyo pesa zote tungitoa wapi. Uli niambia baba yako awezi kupatiwa 
eh, harabi na watu na wewe uko na pesa hiyo uzuri yako ininishida lakini tukaendelea hivi hata kila kitu kipatio ya matuda nini unalete umetusaidia mimi ni mwa Amerika sasa akasema acha dadi aende akatumzike kwa sababu alikuwa mgonjwa kijana nimeshidwa na uzuri yako nikafurahi kwa sababu hiyo yote unafanya matoto ukachukua yote mimi sina kazi ya kufanya Zee wakati alikuwa kijana ya kwanza na ni sasa hivi anataka kwenda maandiko kazi ulimwambia ukipata mtoto utakusaidia na kila kitu after one year ambia huyu mama usishughulike naye Zee alikuwa anataka kwenda ngambo akiwa kijana kusoma lakini hakwenda kila saa anasema yeye ni Mungu nimeye ni muamerika saa akasema wacha dadi aende akapumzike kwa sababu alikuwa mgonjwa kijana nimeshidwa na uzuri yako nikafurahi kwa sababu hiyo yote unafanya matoto ukachukua yote mimi sina kazi ya kufanya kashukua kijana ya kwanza na ni saile tu umekuwa umeandikwa kazi ukashukua mtoto alikuwa form, eh, alikuwa standard 8 kaniambia huyu mama usishughulike naye hao wengine the same kijana ukaniondolea mzigo kaondolea baba yako kaweka zote kwa eh, kwa siandaine si yako nie dili ndo ingehota gukwira no jokirie gatho ni ndo ni joe ona diho dirahota kwalia sasa hiyo yote ulifanya kwa upendo yako mimi ndio huyu nikawa mgonjwa pia unanilete hapa nimekaa kaniambia mam naona unakuwa mzuri sana kuja nikupeleke ukanipeleka kwa ngari kaniambia mami nataka just on the point one ka nataka kukununulia ewe ngari mimi sitake ukae nyumbani nataka ukatoka kuenda kuona wakira mama na ukaendaga ile mambo yako nataka kuenda kufanya na ukabemba wakira mama na hii gari lakini kukaa nyumbani au utagojeka sana na mimi sitaki hiyo maneno kijana i can forget ile pe, ile mambo yote ulichukua kaweka kwa mziko kwa unani unaniondolea tabu yote sasa unaona hata kama sikuri mimi nguvu tu nitapata kijana nimekuombea Mungu bahari unaenda Mungu akuweke salama. Nimeomba rosary not even one or two or three per day. Nimefanya novena. Nimeomba mama Maria. Nimemuomba ninamwambia mama unajua uchungu ya mtoto. Hakuna wakati nilikuwa nafikiri Luka ataenda. Nimefanya nimefanya mass tumefanya mingi na nimesaidiwa na Father Kanyeri. Thank you Father wetu Mr. Kanyeri. Father Kanyeri tumeenda hiyo safari ya kijana yote tangu aanze mpaka saa hii. Kuomba nimeomba. Nimeomba the whole day. Nikuwa hata sitaki mgeni kwangu kwa nyumba kwa sababu hakuna kitu ingine nikiamuka usiku saa tisa saa ile yote naamuka usingizi na kosa mimi naomba sasa wakati ile niliambio umeenda kijana yangu nilijua Mungu anakupenda na anakupeleka bahari bazuri ulikuta ukaona miguu yangu inaanza kuuma na shidwa na kwenda juu umetengenezea mimi nyumba hapo nyuma ile walikuwa wanakaa kapomoa 
ukaweka a very very good room kwa sababu nilikuambia sitaki kujengewa mimi nataka kukaa hapa kwa sababu hapa iko watu wengi na mkiwa to bury a son from mother or a father is painful mom we want to assure you that god has provided you with many sons and daughters who will take care of you be strong uh, for purposes of comfort uh, for the people who are a bit new in this church uh, the washrooms are on my right hand side down there and uh, Nani's family, uh, dad and two brothers, live in the U.S. Uh, and because of the time and complications of travel currently because of the COVID, COVID protocols, they were not able to join us today. But they recorded a clip for the tribute and I request the media team to play it. His father, Mr. Mr. Mungai, and his two brothers, Joe. But thank you so much. Thank you, Njoro, for being my brother, for being there always, for bringing us even closer together as a family, as relatives and as friends. Mom, Dad, you have lost a son, Chico. You have lost a dad, a father. We have lost a brother. All of us have lost a relative of our friend. But we have gained a community. He has brought us people who will be there when we need them. I will make a request for everyone who knew him. Please write a tribute to him and send it to MMC. We can make a book. I know it's going to it will irritate the hell out of him and humble him. I wish to remember him through your eyes. Thank you. And again, we had a bit of struggle to give them an opportunity to give tribute to, your, to their beloved uncle. But I want to give this opportunity to young Mungai to come over and give tribute to your uncle. I want to recognize the presence of my good friend, Governor Nyoro from Kembu. I also want to recognize uh, my good friend Peter Kenneth, who was a very good friend of uh, Nani. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. Karibu. Morning, everyone. My name is uh, Peter Mungayo Jr and I'm representing the, uh, Uncle Njoro's nephews and nieces. Of all my cousins, I had the great fortune of knowing Uncle Njoro the longest. He has been a father, a mentor, a hero, a role model, fill in the blanks. To this day, how someone in his mid-50s can have the hearts and minds of millennials and Gen Zers in such a tight embrace continues to baffle me. Far consequential than super strength or the ability to fly, 
and Conjuror's superpower, for which there is no kryptonite, was how he made, he made each of us feel like we were the center of his world. One day, moved to tears from an overwhelming sense of gratitude, I sent him a not so random WhatsApp message. Now, I was always super careful whenever I'd send him a message. You see, earlier in my previous career, I sent a client a brief legal opinion and CC'd him. Picking apart at my pure pontification with no sources whatsoever, he opined my so-called opinion belonged on social media pages and not law firms of excellent reputation like the one he co-founded. Back to the gratitude message. I began by acknowledging people often don't get flowers while they can still smell them. I thanked him for everything he had ever done for me and pleaded with him to let me know how I could go about repaying him. He didn't wish for tribute, poems, monuments, or songs of valor. Pay it forward, he wrote back, as simple as I wish could be. Pay it forward. An ocean of sadness drowns us. Since he left us, grief has taken up residence in our hearts. We will mourn his departure, but we will be fine, eventually. He poured himself into us, and now we give him our collective word. We will pay it forward. Rest in peace, Uncle Njoro. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mugai. Um, thank you so much. We are doing very well in time, and I like us to move a bit faster because time is not on our side. Uh, and this is time we have just finished the family. We now want to go to uh, Joros' other side of his life, where he used to do business. And as you know, myself and Nani, we teamed up way back in 1996 and came up with a law firm called Mure Mungai and Company Advocates. Uh, and the firm has metamorphosized to be an international law firm, today known as MMC Asafo. And through wisdom of Nani, we've been able to do something very unique in terms of succession management, uh, putting up the right structures, being the right people, and I think we need to honor him for that. I want to give this opportunity to the sitting managing partner of the firm, Madam Esther Omolele. Uh, uh, I don't want Esther, why isn't Esther here? Is Esther Omolele around? Yes, so thank you, Esther. Uh, so Esther will give the tribute on behalf of the firm. And I'm also going to give a tribute on behalf of the founding partners. Thank you. Welcome, Esther. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this is a very difficult day for MMC uh, because Nani was really everything for us. But as with the family, we will stand strong and live on and continue to ensure that the dream that he lived succeeds. So I'll read two tributes. One is my tribute, and the other one is from Asafo and Co, our managing partner who sits at the international level. His name is Asafo. So I'll start with mine. Dear NN, we called him NN in the office. Who would have known that you'd be gone so soon? Many times we joked about your retirement. You seated in Mutuapa, an eccentric old man dressed in a kikoi with your fellow retirees, playing draft and telling them stories in Swahili about your days as a big shot lawyer. And to that you said they would not believe you because you'd be seated there without shoes and just, you know, speaking like them. Later on, you told us about Kamulu, and there are many, many stories about your retirement. So many things have been said about you, and then My most favorite is your passion for mentorship. 
I remember when you introduced a mentorship program at MMC. I was lucky to be on the list of your mentees. Just so you know, I am tracking well on my deliverables to date. You always reminded us to, of the importance of accountability. For this, we at MMC Asafo will forever be grateful. As managing partner of MMC Asafo, I will miss your guidance and support. As a partnership, we will miss your strategic and visionary approach to business. As members of staff, we will miss how you made the practice of law enjoyable. To the Omolele family, that's my family, you are a brother. A fine man for all seasons. Dance and end. Dance with the celestial knights and maidens. You're part of the firmament now. Go on. Dance. Goodbye, my friend. The second tribute is from our managing partner at Asafo & Co., the international law firm. His name is Pascal Agboebo, and I read on his behalf. In May 2013, precisely on 22nd of May, I was invited to a meeting in Nairobi to discuss mortgage-backed securities. I met Nani for the first time at that meeting. I am lucky that George Rubagumia, who is second to none in connecting people, insisted that we make a point to mark the day of our meeting. I am more than grateful to George to have this picture of the very first day I met Nani. There's a photo here. After the series of meetings during the day, we had dinner together. It was unusually friendly for people who were meeting for the first time. I left Nairobi the following day with a feeling, although not entirely clear at the time, that this trip was special. In fact, it was special. I had just met a lawyer with a unique character. We stayed connected outside of the project for which my colleagues and I made the trip. I was lucky to later convince my firm that MMC would be our corresponding firm, and we started the following few weeks working together until later when we would reach another common dream. I had gotten to know an exceptional professional, an extremely entrepreneurial and full of ambition for his firm, and absolutely obsessed by the need to elevate his younger colleagues and his associates. Teaming with an international firm was for him a powerful opportunity to contribute to positively changing the professional trajectory of his associates and younger partners, and an opportunity to offer another platform to his clients. In 2019, after initial discussions with George Rubagumia again, I presented the possibility of launching an international law firm focused on Africa with a solid African presence. Nani's voice resonated as if this was the first development he was expecting, it was the next development he was expecting for his firm. After the launch of Asafo & Co, Co's first um, offices in May and June, we met in Nairobi in July with colleagues from Lagos, Abidjan, and Johannesburg. Extremely productive discussions around the vision, the architecture, and the need to act immediately. Nani, Edward, and others decided to join, and in November 2019, we launched MMC Asafo. Before that, we made very decisive trips together to Lagos and Abidjan. Throughout the discussions around our vision and the mission of Asafo and Co., I discovered more about the dimensions, other dimensions of the man who strikes you by his intelligence. I discovered his pan-Africanism, his generosity, and his ab ambition for Africa. He thought that Asafo and Co. is an illustration of what Africans can do together and beyond words. Often dreams can be accomplished if, we, if the will is there. Only the first year together we managed to build a firm located in five countries, bringing together 180 lawyers. Thereafter, we expanded in London and Washington, D.C. Nani was not just a board member. He has contributed significantly to shaping our firm. Personally, the complicity uh, between us gave me the energy to dare the dream. I would like your daughter, that's a um, Pascal saying, I'd like your daughter, your family, the MMC family, who are also proud of you to accept our gratitude as a firm. You have brought us, 
You have brought so much to us and we want to assure you that we'll continue the dream. Build a leading global law firm dedicated to Africa and which effectively contributes to improving the lives of the people of the African continent. I wrote to you last week from Lom. You did not respond. I did not know that you were fighting. Bye bye and thank you, my friend. Pascal Agoboibo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esther. Uh, and the ones who have not met Esther before, Esther is third generation managing partner of MMC Asafo. I was a managing partner for about 14 years. Uh, when I passed the baton to Peter Munge, Peter Munge passed the baton after about 13 years to Esther. And I'm sure Esther, you knock your 12 years, 13 years. We wish you all the best, uh, in the, either in the absence of Nani. Allow me to read my tribute. And uh, it's a bit of a struggle because being someone for over 26 years, meeting each and every day, and having a unique relationship whereby we have never disagreed on any issue, it's not easy. So allow me to read my tribute, a tribute from Wakili Edward Moreo. I call him Joro. To our colleagues in the office, they call him a man. To friends and professional colleagues, they call him Nani. And to his West, uh, Nairobi West, Muta boys, and Nairobi school friends, they call him Luca. Her name, of course, was given by her Catholic mother. To his parents, siblings, and close family, they call him Joroge. To my daughters, they call him Ankonjoro. While Shiko calls him dad, this guy was one fits all. He was a different stroke for different folks. I'm still in shock and disbelief that Nani has passed away. I did not see it coming despite the one and a half years of ailment which we were all hoping that he will return, he will turn around, recover, join us back in the grid. We hoped that with the best doctors in the world, they will work some magic. I was with Njoro for 26 years, meeting almost every day and I've never seen him sick, not even a flu. Even at the hospital, we had agreed that upon his recovery, we shall hit the campaign trail in Gatala constituency, where I'm vying for member of parliament. I'm inheriting from Peter Kenneth, and he's just right here. <laughs> and since he loved the outdoors, and dancing, he will lead the dancing crew. Joro, though a few years older than me and having met at the University of Nairobi in the late 80s, we eventually met in the mid 90s where we shared a common employer. After I left employment and set up the law firm in 1995, it did not take too long to strike a deal with him to join me as a partner, which he did, and he set up the law firm known then as Morel Mungai and Company Advocates in October. Which firm has since metamorphosized into an international law firm today known as MMC Asafo. Nani was eclectic from the word go. When I approached him, with an agenda of teaming up, that was in 1996. He took me for lunch at a food kiosk near railway station for a meal of chapati and chicken, which I found a bit odd for a senior lawyer like him, but that was nanny, simple and practical. On our second meeting, 
I invited him for lunch before signing the partnership deed. Of course, I wanted to impress him and show him, how, show him off how well I'm doing. And I took him to the brand new, uh, then Grand Jersey Hotel, at the exclusive members club. Not sure whether it still exists. Sadly, he was not impressed. But that marked the beginning of our journey as close friends, business partners, and the brother's keeper, which remained strong until he departed on the 14th. Gerard did not have money to buy the shares for his magnanimity, and being an extremely practical person, he agreed to buy his shares through sweat. That is working without a pay. We agreed that he would be doing the court work, which I did not like too much, and I opted to, get, to be getting the client as well as manage the office. Joro love for adventure and free spirit manifested one year down the line when we closed our first financial year together and we reported a profit of two million. That was in December 1997. Now he made a very interesting request. He requested that for his share of profit, which was one million, I should give it to him in cash. That was a lot of money then. In today's currency, it should be about 25 million. He told me that he wanted to fly to South Africa, squander every cent, and cleanse himself of poverty and want. I did exactly that. The only companion he invited to the trip is my cousin, Daniel Kamamboro. Daniel Kamamboro, who is now a construction magnate in Nairobi, had just lost his job at Kenya National Assurance and claims he paid for the air ticket to South Africa, a fact which Joro, Joro, Joro always disputed. But both were in agreement that upon reaching Johannesburg, Daniel Kamambo never paid a single cent for their four weeks trip. Joro settled all the bills, including uh, Kamamburu's pocket money. Clearly, Nani's generosity was measured. On their return, it took an equal time of their stay to narrate the stories and wonders of adventure in South Africa, which we listen with awe and astonishment, and of course, with a lot of exaggerations. Trust Kamamburu. I came to discover that on my own when I went to South Africa in search of gold. <laughs> the gist of the trip is that Nani came back penniless, but extremely wealthy with experience of adventure, ready to do the work. He loved court battles. He always he was always overprepared for it. Judges loved him for being articulate and organized. It was not a surprise that when Judge of the Supreme Court, Justice J.B. O'Joan, was being hounded out of office at the Supreme Court, well before his well-deserved retirement, he tapped on Nani to represent him, which he did successfully. We have traveled together to almost every corner of the world with Nani. And when you are with, with, with Njoro, you do not need to worry about directions or where to eat. He was very organized and he would let me enjoy the trips together with, with my, normal, my usual naps along the way. Peacefully, what a great friend. In the farm, Njoro was used to, Njoro used to know him as a heavy lifter. Whenever we had heavy briefs, we never used to worry on how to execute them. He had a very analytic mind and was able to dissect complicated matters to the amazement of both ourselves as his partners and to the clients. He was a hard worker to a fault and no assignment was difficult to him. It was fun and comforting. Whenever Nani is handling a challenging brief, we were assured of quality to the end. In our, in our boardrooms, Joel was full of wisdom. He was never 
over exaggerated about anything and looked at every issue soberly. Material wealth was never his driving force. That aspect was able to guide us a lot as his business partners, especially in later years in life. He once told us that after 50 years of age, you have no business taking a bank loan, despite him being a banking, banking lawyer. The reason being that by the time you start getting a return on that investment, you do not need that money because you are either too old to enjoy, to enjoy it or you are long departed. True to his words, Joro died without a personal debt. I shall really miss you in Joroge. I've cried a lot asking God why take away Joro from us, of all people, but God knows why. Sleep with the angels, my brother. We loved you, but God loved you more. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. I'm multitasking. Now I come back as an MC. Strong. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Nani, and allow me to use all manner of names because people, different people used to know him differently, had a huge strata of friends from business, social, travelers, sojourners, adventurists, uh, book lovers, uh, and all of them played a very, very, very pivotal role in his life, and that's why his life became complete. I request um, one good friend of his, whom I also is as old as I met him together with Manny many years ago, uh, his friend, none other than Makome, Sam Makome. Sam Makome is a COO of KCB. Of course, if I miss the title, I'm sure there'll be a promotion, you come and correct me. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he has been, he's representing his good friends called Global. Kindly, Makome, kindly over, come and give you a tribute. Thank you. Makome, I am representing a very close group of friends to Nani. I'd asked them to stand. Some of them were supposed to stand next to me. I don't know why they have not stood next to me, but I'd like to have at least one or two of them next to me, as we agreed. And I'll just read our tribute. First of all, I'd like to convey our condolences to the family of Nani on behalf of Global Equity. Mom, we stand with you, and Shiko, we stand with you and the rest of the family. Nani was also family to us. This group, Global, is a two decades old friend known as Global Equity Ventures. It's a diverse group of people, Stanley Kinyanjui, our interim chair, Nazima here, Dr. Nganga, Dr. Irungu, Paul, Henry, Kirubi, Sam Kimani, myself. Some of us are not able to join because we are out of the country and in, in, in operating theaters as we speak. But we have been very, very close uh, to Nani. And Nani was our chairman because, in fact, he was the only person who could be able to manage this motley crew and the complexity of the group. He was, and he is one of the people who was very visionary, and although initially Global started as an investment group, it is through his wisdom that it actually transformed into a brotherhood, and indeed a sisterhood. We have Nazima because of Nani, because he is the one who always challenged all conventions. And after many years, he even said, we are no longer just an investment club, we are a geriatric traveling club. Mm -hmm. To reflect the fact that our world are changing, we are investing more, not in capital, but in friendship, in family, 
in social capital and in traveling across the globe, which he, he loved and which we did together. We remember him with his sharp wit, his laughter, in far-flung places like Havana, Cuba, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and in the Vatican. With Nani, things were never ordinary. We went with him to the Kuchi Caves in Vietnam, where he laughed at me trying to handle the first AK-47 I'd ever seen in my life. He was just a unique person, took us to Cuba, Varadero, because of his revolutionary zeal. Our shared passion for F1 racing, where took us to Barcelona, Singapore, Abu Dhabi. Our memories of him are a comfort that we lived life. And the fact that he said, let's, let's go, let's see the world, is actually a key part of his legacy. Because, yes, he said, there is more than simply building some capital. So we remember him. Our last trip was intended to visit Nani in Seattle in October. And it was supposed to be a surprise trip, but sadly it was not to be. Nani traveled back before then. Nani had a brilliant mind. He would engage deeply with us on virtually any subject. He was comfortable in the sciences, comfortable in the arts. His insights were absolutely amazing. He had an unmatched way of seeing things clearly. He could cut through all the flap. He would give his best contribution in any circumstance. He was forthright and candid. And he would never tell you just what you wanted to hear. He was a very, very candid individual. He was an engaging conversationalist. In most subjects, he was a consummate intellectual. She could even mention about his collection of books. He was my housemate many, many years ago, 30 years ago. And he started collecting books many, many years ago. He introduced us to books like The Varieties of Religious Experiences by Professor William James. Books like Life Against Death. And many of us can cite specific influences that led to life-changing decisions in our careers and in our businesses. That is the kind of person Nani was as a friend. A few weeks ago, we had our final chairman's get together as a group where we cut a Christmas cake just before Christmas. And Nani was in his element, never a person seeking sympathy. He was in his element engaging us lucid on a wide area of issues with passion and clarity of mind. Little did we know as a group that this was our final time together with him, as a group together. The passing of our chairman, Nani, is the burning of a rich and expansive library. Nani was a mentor, a peer mentor. Many of us can cite, and I can cite individually, always egging you to become the better, the, a better person. He believed in the realization of full potential, no wonder he kept on improving, kept on reading. He lived it himself and he's left this baton in our hands. And as a group, we'll honor his challenge. We see far as a group because we have stood on the shoulders of a giant. One of the enduring aspects of Nani's legacy was his generosity, which people have mentioned. And he has, was generous to family, but he was generous to many others. He never trumpeted his giving, but he gave sacrificially to causes, many causes. A blind elderly lady that needed a cataract operation, having been blind for six years. An ablution block in a rural primary school far in my rural home, where he didn't come from. He was a sacrificial giver. He gave not only of his time, his money, but his time and treasures as well. And his compassion was a legend. When I lost my mother, I remember Nani personally took me to identify the body. He's the one who actually moved my mother's body to the place that it was to be taken. He's, he was an amazing person. When you had a need, he would be there for you. And for one so gifted and so senior, he was extremely humble. The outward expressions of social progress meant little to him. He preferred simplicity. His signature black suits and white shirts, he told me, were chosen because he did not want to spend too much time trying to look smart or making decisions about things that didn't matter much in life anyway. He was an amazing guy, very simple. Even as senior as he was, he was when one of us lost a parent, he was there holding chalk personally, driving and drawing the directions personally with chalk, directing cars where they would go. That was his humility and his compassion. A man of adventure, he sailed in the Caribbean. 
in the Adriatic Sea, traveled to the Amazon jungle, drove to both Cape Town and Cairo from Nairobi, and he infected us with this same sense of wonder and adventure. He truly lived a full life. We will miss Nani, we will miss his humor, his humane nature, and his friendship. Fare thee well, Chairman Nani. Thank you. Thank you, Global, Global Team. Um, and very quickly, allow me to call Mr. Professor Julius Gatune, very good friend, friend of Nani. And because of time, we'll be able to rush a bit uh, because we're about like less than 15 minutes to start the, the mass. So, uh, Julius, uh, do as fast as you can. Thank you. Yes. It's quite humble humbling experience to be called to say something about a giant like Nani. A very, very dear friend of mine, a soulmate, and a brother. I came to know Nani back in 1986, May, when we were NYS. A kind of a nasty encounter because I tried to steal food from the Adwa barracks and he caught me and made sure I didn't get it and embarrassed me quite a bit. But later we met in university. Uh, where uh, he was doing what I was doing, engineering, but some of my classmates were his friends. So we came to know each other and became good friends. And since then, it has been a joyous ride for me. Me, riding the short, riding the shotgun, him, the driver's seat. I dandeered mostly, but he enjoyed it. And I always wonder, because I think I was his muse, so he, he encouraged me to be with him. So it was a, it's a great pressure. And in that, I came to see many facets of, of Nani. Nani Njoroge Mungai was many faces. was like a fine gem. You'd call it a fine gem with many, many faces. And I came to see some of those faces. And I can introduce a few which I came to know. Nani, the connector, super connector. Do everyone all spheres of life? managed to connect people if you wanted, generous with connections, and respected, so his reference was strong. Nani the interpret, fearless, resolute, and I think this is what made him a good lawyer. He cared for justice, and I believe that's what made him move, you know, initially he went to do pharmacy in university, but he, be, he moved to law. And why? Actually, he narrated him one story. When they were in Paj, in Nairobi school, I was in Starei with Peter Kenneth. Uh, he said that one from, from five bullies actually had captured one of his, from two classmates, and uh, they were, and you know there was bullying, and he took a posse, and he went to say, let's rescue these boys of ours. And obviously you know what at all order it is to, for from five to try and face up from, for from two to face up from six. But they said they did, but luckily, uh, Mr. Mugai's dad had kind of at one time given him a switchblade as a present and he produced it, changed the balance of war, and they retreated and they rescued his boy. That was him. He could fight for justice if needed to. But otherwise, he was non-violent. Nobody, I'm sure, has ever seen him. But he, he cared for justice. And I think, to me, that was key. Another way we can see Njao, for me, he was what you'd call, and as it has been said here, a polymath. A polymath is someone who just knows from many things and can combine things and give you interesting solutions. That was he was. He was brilliant, uh, you have met, and this is how I interacted with him mostly. He had a library, and as I say, for me, he would have books. It was a candy shop. Obviously, we were there. Many books has been said, Chico said. Everything from sciences to economics to what was there. Actually, finally enough, I never did see books of law there. But we there, we had discussions. Obviously, we had a uh, nice whiskey, fine whiskey cabinet, which I think was more of the attraction for me. Uh, and we had good discussions uh, with Professor Muranga, who some of you know was a good friend. And we had interesting discussions, solved many problems. I was a bit tipsy uh, by then. And actually, the last time we went, he noticed the whiskey had run out and made a point with Willie that they need to go and get some more whiskey in case I arrive next time and be greeted with water. So that was him. And Joe, 
the traveler, you know he traveled a lot, that was the said. And I got to travel with him a bit. Mostly I traveled vicariously through him, they traveled the world, as so I said, with Globo, with Nazima, they went to exotic carnival and other places, uh, Good Rovers, uh, Lonely Planet, he was a backpacker at one time. But I got to go with him on some trips. We went to Ghana, he came to Ghana when I was working there, we went to Ashanti Kingdom, he jumped into Burkina Faso, into a coup where we had to live on a Boda Boda. Then we went to Mozambique with Yonas, our friend, uh, South Africa, dancing the Zulus in uh, Swaziland, off to Shai Shai, ate nice food, solved Ethiopia problem with you know, intellectual discussion there. Yes, he traveled. Boom Rovers on some few trips with the famous rig. I was one of the people who has the, the, the privilege of going there, so Mount Kenya, so on. But two, two trips were important for me because he, in May he came to my daughter's graduation in Louisiana and we took a road trip. And we went from Louisiana all the way, dared the rednecks in Alabama, we drove there singing loudly. You know how dangerous is it for three black people to be driving through Alabama singing, but we did it. We went to Tennessee, dismissed Elvis and said, yeah, we, the real king was Chuck Berry. Uh, went to Mississippi, uh, the cl famous taxi junction for Robert Johnson, if you know about blues. Uh, had a, we did our bargain there because we wanted to become musicians later as we retired in Mutuapa because that was our dream. We were going to form a band. So that was the junction where you go and get the gift of, of the music. So, so we did that and I went to Ohio. So that was a memorable trip. Last time we did the other trip was here where I did my trip and uh, we went to Mombasa, Garissa and so on. That was the last trip I, I did with him. Again, a quite a memorable trip. The other aspect I, about Njaro, obviously, he loved food, if you, if you all know. Foodie, he was a foodie, he loved food. Uh, Brian was his favorite, and he had a companion in Nazima. He loved Nan, Chapati, and so on, and Marianne, and Joaquin Mitua, he got that. He also loved cake, and Kate, Dr. Kate Getau actually did do us good and was going to teach us how to make cake. But one thing he was good at, he could make very, very, he was number one steak, steak master in Kenya. He taught me and I'm now, I became number two. Now, fortunately now, I'm kind of number one, not that I wanted to be number one. <laughs> but we had actually said, as part of, apart from our band in Umutopa, we were not going to open a kibanda. And we were going to do our signature dish was going to be Philadelphia cheesesteak, which he liked so much when we were in Philadelphia. But it was going to be Mutuapa cheesesteak. So, that was Nani for me. Good friend, very, very good friend. Had a good time together. I miss him dearly. And you know he was a family man, that has been said. Mom Willie, I can't say more than that. Shiko, you know he was a great dad took care of the family. I was, became part of the family, kind of. And Mama, Mamaze, Willy, Shiko and us, you will continue seeing me. So don't yet get tired of seeing me. I'm going to be there always. So what I can say, farewell. Farewell to my great friend. You lived a good life. You lived life well lived. A life was emulating. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Uh, let us have a short interlude by this young man called Kyle Nderito. Uh, can you adjust uh, the mic for him? Please, can you don't step there? You can just come right here. Oh, you can open the notes for you. Bring the notes. Bring the, where are the notes? Understand this is a music where you have to play with the notes. So. Thank 
you, Kyle. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you so much. Sorry. Yeah, because of time, kindly uh, you do it after the service, right? Thank you so much. Um, let me take this opportunity to invite the president of the Law Society of Kenya. As you all know, Nani was a member and has practiced law for the last for 30 years. Uh, let me request the president of the Law Society, uh, President Nelson Harvey, and his team to say a few words. But I know, let me just say something which Harvey will not tell you, that Harvey, we employed him when he never knew how to write a, a plaint. <laughs> and therefore, Harvey, has grown in the hands of myself and Nani. Now, we've been talking about bottom up. Leaving people from bottom going up. That is a true demonstration of bottom up economic model. Your Excellency, Karib Sama. Well, uh, I have asked these two ladies to stand on my right and on my left because uh, on the 27th of February 2020, in his usual uh, humorous manner, and then, as I used to call him, asked me, Unataka nipigie na nikura? Nikamambia Esther Ngawa and Daudi Kamende. Kaniambia, Kumbuka, just send me a text. Good morning, friends. Table Rochero has sung a song, Mokolo Nakokufa. I've always thought that in the event that I was to predecease my mother and my eldest daughter who I named after my mother, they will be the ones to cry most. Mama Wanjiku, pole kutoka kwangu, kwa familia yangu, na kwa mawakili ambao wanapata ushawishi wangu. Kumpoteza kijana, 
kijana uliyompenda ni mzigo mkubwa sana nitakuombea uwe na nguvu ya kustahimili majonsi shiko you may not know me but at one point in time when i was working for your father he asked me to come and pick you from school <laughs> you know many advocates especially the young ones always look at responsibilities given to them as uh, derogatory as discrimination but i used to pick sonia from school boss here will tell you i used to drive uh, boss and also nn i will not speak a lot i'll be very precise two weeks ago a very good friend of mine a client a friend to nani came to me and told me our friend is very sick and uh, he may not have long i asked him can we go and see him he said uh, let me call nazima malik and see if we can get to see him he called nazima and nazima told us uh, i don't know whether you'll be allowed to see him because uh, there are some little complications and we told her we are prepared to go and see nani whatever the complications after further inquiries it was ascertained that uh, we may not be able to see him i told my friend it's okay nani has lived a full life because many of us always have a big misconception about life we think we must have so many children we must take them to the best schools we must please everybody but i told uh, my friend and i picked a book that was on my shelf written by fidel castro in my own words i told him this gentleman he died without a wife in fact he's the only child is insignificant as far as the cubans are concerned but what is important in life is to leave a mark an indelible mark and i can tell you and i'm not speaking here as a leader of uh, the lawyers i'm speaking here as a friend and an employee of mmc that what is important in life is what people remember you for in brief nani and i met in 2003 we met in court that was the first time i met him the case was catholic relief services versus transami I was acting for Catholic Relief Services and he was acting for Transami. I was barely 6 months in practice but I won a summary judgment of 35 million against uh, Nani. He told me, "Young man, can we have lunch?" I said, "Yes." We had lunch the following day and he came with his uh, macusial friend and they told me, "We want you to work with us." I told them uh, I'm working in a prestigious Muzungu farm. Why would I want to come and work in a running down farm? <laughs> They told me we'll double your salary and we are giving you an opportunity to succeed. Where you are in a Muzungu farm, you have zero chance of succeeding. And indeed they doubled my salary. Uh within uh, within 6 uh, months of uh, admission I was earning a salary of 70,000 courtesy of this gentleman. And you know in that farm there are people who are five years older than I in practice and they were earning 40,000 shillings. And uh, EK as we used to and as we still call him said that this is a business. You bring money to my company in a big pipe I give you part of what you brought in a big pipe. And uh, EK now that uh, there is nobody to contradict what I will say, I will say. <laughs> And it's partly captured in what you've written about uh, Nani. And uh, quite accidentally I said this morning I will not dress in my traditional attire of navy blue and a blue 
Kai because I'm going for a funeral. I say I will put on what Nani will have put on on this day. A simple plain suit, a red tie with a knot characteristic of that of J.F. Kennedy. That is how Nani used to dress. So occasionally, when we could have trouble with E.K., and we had a lot of trouble with E.K., <laughs> my controversy didn't start yesterday. <laughs> I could go to Nani and tell him, look, E.K. is telling me to do this. It, it doesn't make sense. And Nani will tell me, don't worry. Sorry, E.K., he could say, well, you know, E.K. is not a lawyer. E.K. is a businessman. <laughs> we are the lawyers here. We are supposed to help him make this business enterprise prosper. Look, the time we have is not sufficient for me to speak about E.K. Sorry, to speak about Nani. We won so many cases with Nani, many, many cases. I can mention just a few. A Dr. Light, we are the ones who revived Uchumi then when it was going down. We won the case uh, for the governor of uh, Narok, and uh, I remember we spent two weeks in, uh, in Nakuru with Nani. Nani enjoyed life, and uh, some of what uh, has been picked by Ike is true. He liked dancing, and you know, Ike, you will attest to this, the only two tall, dark, and handsome men in your farm. <laughs> Maybe others will have come. Well, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking from uh, what I was told. Because I remember the last dance we had with Nani was at Club uh, Lambada in Westlands. You remember, he usually used to give us Tuesday to go out and enjoy. And we went there. And fortunately, E.K. had given me a lot of powers in that farm. At a tender age of uh, 29, he had asked me to employ four more advocates to assist me. And I picked two of my classmates, Ben Simio and my very good friend, Liz Kiasio. So we went dancing at Clamp Lambada, and all of us were struggling to please Liz Kiasio. Uh, Look, I can dance Lingara very well, but when it comes to salsa, Nani took it and took the girl. <laughs> You've been told that Nani was a distinguished lawyer. I can tell you that without any fear of contradiction. In my first appearance with Nani, we were before Justice Aganyanya. And he told me, Harvey, we need to make a very elaborate list and bundle of authorities. And Nani was full of jokes. He told me, but I don't know what the reception will be because the first time I appeared before Aganyanya, after he had just been appointed judge and transferred to Nairobi, I went with a big bundle of authorities. And Aganyanya said, Wee kijana, iyo kitabu kubo mekuja hapa na ni nini? And uh, Nani said, he told him, uh, my lord, this is a bundle of authorities. Aganyanya told him, me or what to me, Hapa? <laughs> and uh, Nani said, uh, my lord, Hapa Nairobi Pakat to me, he. <laughs> At one point in time, he told me, you know, sometimes judges can be very troublesome if you appear before them. They will make your life difficult but you need to be very tactful how you handle them. He told me he once appeared before Justice John Maluto. Uh, sorry, uh, it, it's, it's recorded. And uh, the judge needed clarity on the matter that the witness had said and kept on asking questions. So Nani decided to be mischievous. He sat down and told the witness, continue answering the judge's questions. That was Nani, versatile and multifaceted. As we sat here, I thought my eyesight was diminishing. And I asked my very good uh, 
Deputy President from Alliance, Caroline Kamende. Is there an uh, is there an eulogy here, or my eyes are uh, troubling me? She told me she hasn't seen any, and I think it's quite appropriate. Ek, we don't need an eulogy for Nani. Nani has died, but he has not gone. I say so because he lived a full life. In my own words, I think he died empty, but he lived a full life. So that as we sat with my friend two weeks ago, I said there's no need for us to cry. And I plead with you, Mama and Jiku, don't cry. I plead with you, Shiku, don't cry. You know, I see none in you. The problem with handsome men is that uh, you, you, you will always see them in their daughters. Speaking of this, I must tell you something. You know, one day we walked late at night, up to three in the morning. It was a very demanding brief. I was not yet married. So I kept on calling uh, my girlfriend then, who is my wife now, telling her, Baru to go go face. The nanny told me, on a you have it, a corner she sana because if you had to become a distinguished lawyer, you will always find very little time for your wife. Na jamaa anaweza kunyanganya. Shiku, I want to see nani. Please give us three or four nannies. Thank you so much, friends. This is how life is. Life is never complete unless it's punctuated by death. What you do in your life is what is important. Here, gathered in our midst, everybody, and in particular lawyers, we look at the life of Nani and say this is how life has to be lived. Versatile and complete. Nani departs like a phoenix. He resides amongst us. May his soul rest in internal peace. And those who remain behind, may we have the strength to go through this trying period. May God bless you abundantly. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those kind words. You, you two are the menus of our journey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me recognize the presence of uh, P.S. Mraguri, Karibu Sana. Uh, sorry, P.S. Hinga. You know, with this mask these days, you look the same. Thank you for your, for your indulgence. Um, Quickly, because of time, we're supposed to start uh, service at 11, and I'm being pushed by the father. But I want to give this opportunity to Nazima, uh, who has been with Nani for a long, 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 long time, um, to say a word. Um, I assumed that it was said by the globe, but I can see uh, there's a word which she wants to, to convey. So, Karibu Sana Nazima, uh, so at least be able to, to, uh, to finalize. Thank you, Nazima. Karibu. Good morning. My name is Nazima Malik. I am a close friend of Nani Mangai. He often introduced me as his sister. Uh, with me is my friend and sister, uh, Flora Indeche. As you can see, I'm in the habit of collecting siblings who are not the same color as me. <laughs> now, in, in one's life, it is not often that you meet someone who comes and changes the course of your life forever. For me, that person was Nani Mungai. I first met him in 1998 uh, at a camping trip, actually, uh, for a club called Uvumbuzi. We then met after that at a shooting range uh, and a shooting competition. And I we both discovered that we have a shared love for guns, for the outdoors, for music, for theater, for sports. But most of all, our passion was for travel. Now, it is said 
that you really know someone when you travel with them. So the stories that I will give you very shortly and very quickly are a different type of nanny that you will not have heard about today. In 2007, Nani and I decided that we will go to the Caribbean uh, to watch the Cricket World Cup. So we arrive at JKIA and we're told, sorry, you're transiting through two European cities, you need a Schengen visa, which we didn't have. So the next day we go to the travel agent and he says, yes, unfortunately you needed a visa, I forgot to tell you, seven days, it'll take seven days for the visa, by which time our games in Barbados would be over. Of course I was devastated because we had told the whole commercial court that we were off to the Caribbean. Nani sat and stared at this world map in the agent's office. And then he turned to the agent and said, is there a flight from Amsterdam to Suriname? and from Suriname to Barbados. And sure enough, there was. So I asked him, how did you even think of, of Suriname? And he said, well, Suriname was a colony of, uh, of the Netherlands. It was a Dutch colony. And the Holland team has players like Ruud Gullit and David, who are Surinamese. And Suriname is in the Caribbean. Nani had this ability to connect dots that us mere mortals with our normal brains did not have. So that's how we ended up in Paramaribo, which is the capital of Suriname. They told us we are the first Kenyans there. We spent a night there. Unfortunately, due to Nani's Kikuyu genes, he was completely unable to pronounce Paramaribo. <laughs> So from Paramaribo, we were to fly to Barbados the next day. Uh, on the way to Barbados, we realized the flight would touch down in Trinidad and Tobago. And Nani and his adventurous spirit said, Situshukiapa, we still have some time before our games in Barbados. And that's how Nani introduced me to Trinidad and Tobago, which has become my second home on the planet. But more about that later. So other than the Cricket uh, World Cup, in 20, we went to every single uh, football World Cup since 2010. In 2014, we went to the World Cup in Brazil. I will ask the media team to play those clips you see there. So please uh, photograph one to three. So we had tickets to the quarterfinals. We had tickets to the semifinals. It was very difficult to get tickets to a final. One night, uh, Nani says, see, we go and check at the ticketing center if we can get tickets for the final. I said, you can't get tickets officially. He says, ah, let's just go and see. So we go to the ticketing center, and there's a guy sitting on the pavement. Nani goes and asks him, do you have tickets? He says, yes, but I can't sell them to you here. There's police. Follow me. <laughs> so we start following this guy. The next thing, we are being taken through an underpass under a tunnel, a dark tunnel. Please note, we are in Rio de Janeiro, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. So I said to Nani, hey, this guy, what if he robs us? So he says, yeah, actually, where Fanyaivo? Kanyuma, Kanyuma. I could talk to start screaming. <laughs> so I'm wondering, okay. And he screamed for who? But funnily enough, this is how I felt with Nani. I felt so safe with him on our trips. So this guy takes us to this very dark alley, produces two tickets, and says it's $1,500 for each ticket. Um, just play the next, the next uh, photograph of the ticket, if you can find one. So he produces this ticket, and Nani tells me to look at it. I look at it and I say, you know, Nani, this ticket, the hologram looks a bit smudged. So he looks at me and says, Miss Malik, do you know FIFA prints how many millions of tickets for this World Cup? Do you expect every hologram to be perfect? <laughs> so I start hesitating and he says, Miss Malik, do you want to watch this final or not? So I say, I, I want to watch, I want to watch. So we pay him, go off to, our, to the apartment. In the apartment, uh, in the bright light of the apartment, we discover that the tickets were printed on recycled paper. <laughs> We had become a fraud statistic in Brazil. Now, whereas I was completely distraught, I had just lost 150,000 shillings, Nani Mungai found it the funniest thing on the planet. In fact, he said, ah, now I have a story to tell when I go back to Kenya. The next day, next, next picture, please. 
the next day he bought that wig to com commemorate how he was conned in Brazil. In 2018, we went for the World Cup in, in Russia. So at that point, again, we had tickets for the semis, tickets for the quarters, no ticket for the final. And I was clear to him, I am not going to buy a ticket from someone sitting on the pavement. So somehow he managed to get tickets for the final, but unfortunately, we had already booked our flights to come back before the final. So he said, don't worry, I'll change the flights. So one night he told me, I've changed our flights. We are to travel from um, Madrid, between Madrid and then uh, the UK, and then back to Kenya. So I told him, you know, for the UK, I think we need transit visas. He said, Ms. Malik, we are arriving in Heathrow Airport and leaving from Heathrow Airport. We don't need a transit visa. Again, I started hesitating, and he, the same question, Ms. Malik, do you want to watch this final or not? I want to watch, I want to watch. So we watched the final, got to the airport at Moscow. The airport staff started asking us for that UK visa. So he was so persuasive that he convinced them we didn't need that, that transit visa. We then arrive in Madrid. Uh, unfortunately there, his powers of persuasion failed him. So whereas I was allowed to travel back because I had a, a valid US visa and I was allowed to travel on the strength of that, I left Nani in the custody of the Spanish police. <laughs> So you can share the next picture, which is us at, at the game, one of the games in, um, in Russia. So again, when I landed, I was so stressed, I called him, Nani was laughing, because now he has a story to tell about how he got stuck at an airport. Nani was drama to travel extreme drama, starting from the way he dressed. He used to like traveling in these track pants and slippers. The number of times he had been removed from the business class queue, because the airline staff couldn't understand who is this going to display his toes <laughs> in business class. In 2019, we went to watch, the next, the next two photos please, went to watch the Rugby World Cup in, uh, in, in Japan. Before that, we had done the Rugby World Cup in the UK, we enjoyed it, so we decided we'll do Japan. So as I'm waiting for Nani at the airport, he skids in just a few minutes to boarding the plane. Why? Because he had gone to a client meeting and now was late. The gate was closed, luckily he had his boarding pass. He managed to pack some clothes quickly into a backpack. So when he got onto the flight, he also realized that he had forgotten his match tickets on a table in his office. When we go to Japan, the tickets had to be DHL to him, and he also spent one whole day in the malls in Tokyo looking for trousers that could fit him because the Japanese were too short. In 2019, Nani also accompanied me to Trinidad for the carnival. Next picture, please which he, he thoroughly enjoyed. We could not share a picture of him in costume. It was too, too much to be shared in a church. Um, so, next picture, please. Um, we had something called Juve, where we throw mud and paint on each other, and he thoroughly enjoyed that carnival. And I remember him, what happens in carnival is that you dance on the streets, there are trucks that follow you, with, well, runners alongside you with music and speakers and everything. Nani took it upon himself to go and measure the distance between one truck and the last truck. And he came and told me, you know, this distance is two kilometers. We have two kilometers of trucks. Nani had such a curious mind when he was traveling. That's so why it was such a joy to travel with him. Because in all the years that I've been going to Trinidad, it had never occurred to me to measure that distance. Nani loved, loved Mosheni. I know he has been portrayed at a, as a very serious person, but Nani loved Moshe Ne. I will just say one serious thing before I get to the Moshe Ne, and I'll say this. I spent every, almost every day from the 21st of December in the hospital with Nani, with his brother Willie and his cousin Dee. And I tell you, in that entire time, 
Nani did not complain once about his illness, not once. He never said, why am I here? Why is this happening to me? I'm fed up of this hospital, not once. In Arabic, we say that is a man with sabr. Sabr is equivalent is grace. And Nani bore his illness and suffering with such grace. So back to the Moshene. Even now, I know Nani is still with me. When I go home at night after I've heard a salacious salacia story, I will sit on my bed and I will, I will tell Nani that story. <laughs> because ours, ours was a bond that even death cannot break. Thank you, thank you, Mazima. Thank you. We missed, would have missed that. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see, Nani lived a truly full life. Because of time, um, I'll skip the program. Uh, but before I do that, allow me just to recognize a number of clients who would have loved to give tribute to Nani and their contribution to their business. Uh, Bonio Kumu, I know you are around, and I'm sure if you can have some time after the service, uh, Bonio Kumu from KCB, uh, the group general council, I'm sure you will, after this you've got a chance to give your tribute. Uh, Daniel Daba from Safaricom, uh, I can see you also. Uh, Kendi Idal, just uh, we can be able to have the, uh, the tribute after. As you all know, Nani um, sat in number of corporations who I used to serve in the board um, and I'm sure the representative of those boards, those corporations are here. Again, allow me just to skip um, starting with the Postal Corporation of Kenya where he was the chairman and I'm sure Julius, uh, Mr. Julius Opini is here. He also served um, as a chairman in the Kenya Wine Agency. Um, and I'm sure, Lena Geduka, you are here to give your tribute kindly. Let's push it a bit ahead slightly. He also served, he's also a former chairman of ICT Authority. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Professor Owen Frederick would have loved to give his tribute. Uh, let's push it ahead a bit. I can see also um, director from ICDC, where Nani also used to serve in the board. Uh, allow us just to push slightly ahead because of time, because there's another service coming after this, so at least we can be able to conclude with the next two uh, tribute. Um, as I prepare, Mr. Jasper, to read the tribute by His Excellency the President, Uhuru Magai Kenyatta, the privilege of reading the tribute of His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto. A condolence message from His Excellency, the Deputy President, Honorable William Samoy Ruto, to the family and friends of the late Jiroge Nani Mongai. Kenya has lost a respected and consummate lawyer who made contribution in the legal domain. I met Nani in 2013 when he led a team of lawyers in defending a presidential election petition at the Supreme Court, which culminated in the petition being thrown out. He was a respected astute legal and business leader as demonstrated in a number of board positions he held across all the commercial sectors. Kenya has lost a great man with great future. A thoughtful and insightful visionary, Wakilinani was far-sighted with immense knowledge of the Constitution and the law. We honor the remarkable life that lent his achievements, the monumental legacy that he leaves behind. We pray to God that it's the family, their loved ones, 
and the legal profession, strength at this sad time. May he be comforted by the word of the Lord in the book of John 16.22, which says, So you have sorrow now, but I will give you, but I will see you again, then you rejoice. And no one can rob you of that joy. Rest in peace. Wakili Joroge Nani Mongai. Thank you so much. Uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome uh, the head of legal in the presidential unit, uh, Mr. Peter, to come and read the eulogy or the condolence at the tribute for His Excellency, the President, His Excellency. Uhuru Mwikai Kenyatta. Thank you. Manani uh, we are united in grief and we share in the loss that you too share. I'm the most unlikely candidate to deliver this message of condolence, but His Excellency the President believes that because of Nani's towering legacy, where he mentored many, including myself, that uh, I was more befitting to deliver this message perhaps than the Lord the Attorney General and I deliver the message. Message of condolence to the family, relatives, and friends of the late Njiroge Nani Mongai. It is with grief and a deep sense of loss that I send you this message of condolence and encouragement following the passing on of Mr. Njiroge Nani Mongai. I pray that the Almighty God will grant you and your entire family the fortitude to bear the loss and peace and strength to reflect upon his towering legacy. A highly respected, admired, distinguished, and a highly esteemed advocate, the late Njiroge Nani Mongai was a star lawyer known for his excellence humility, commitment, and mentoring others. An innovative, ingenious, and witty legal mind, Mr. Mongai always strove to create opportunities for other Kenyans to thrive. It is through this spirit that he partnered with Mr. Murillo to establish the firm of MMC Advocates. And two decades later, as a mark of his pioneering spirit, partnered with one of Africa's largest law firm to establish MMC Asafo. Through this uh, legal enterprise, he offered many opportunities and superlative legal support to many Kenyan corporations, individual families, and even to the states, to which I, as your president, as at the rare privilege to benefit and draw from. For all that Nani was, and in all his abilities and in all his stations in life, he was renowned for his humble demeanor, his kindness, and his ever listening ear. The outpouring of grief and the many tributes we have listened to today from all segments of our, of our life is a true testimony of his immense contributions and to the countless lives that he made immeasurably better. It is these attributes that made a grateful nation, the entire Republic of Kenya, take note of his abilities. All of us will recall how captivating is uh, uh, his submissions were in the 2013 presidential election petition and the subsequent high-profile litigation that have happened thereafter. A civic-minded Kenyan, where he served our nation in various capacities, including as a chairperson of the Postal Corporation of Kenya and chairperson of the ICT Authority and as a chairperson of the Kenya Wine Agencies positions that high as your president had the rare honor 
on conferring upon him in affirmation of his ability and qualities. Mr. Mongai, even as he was ailing, continued to serve us as a republic, as a director of the Kenya Development Corporation. We, the people of Kenya, who always cherish his rare sense of patriotism and remain indebted to him for his role in bringing our nation closer to its destiny. We are grateful that he lived his life well and he has left an indelible mark in the lives of all those who interacted with him. Therefore, as we mourn him, let us be consoled and lifted in his exemplary, his extraordinary, and a rather unique and balanced life. We take solace in Revelations 14, 13, from the King James Version, which will permit me to quote as follows. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. To Mr. Mungai's loving daughter, Wanji Kunjiroge, to Mr. Mungai's mommy, Mr. Mungai's daddy, to his brothers, Willie Mungai, Robert Miranga, and Joseph Kimani, and the entire family of Mr. Mungai, I pray fervently that God will continue to comfort you at this time of grief, even as I appreciate that the tears you bear today will take many years to dry. I pray that the memories which you shared with Mr. Mongai will with time help overcome the sadness and the pain that you have endured and the trauma that you have to go through as you journeyed these last years with him. He will certainly be missed by all those who are fortunate to know him, including myself, those that drew into his legal acumen, including myself, and many, many, many Kenyan citizens, enterprises, corporations, and many other citizens of the world. May the almighty God comfort his family, friends, and colleagues at MMC, the entire Kenyan legal fraternity, and may so rest in eternal peace. Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Jasper Bioki, the State House Legal Council. Uh, on behalf of the family, Mama Wili, Shiko, the brothers and sisters, and on behalf of all my partners in MMC Safo, the entire legal fraternity, Nani's friends, kindly pass our gratitude to His Excellency the President. Uh, as we prepare for the, for the Mass, which will be led by Reverend Dr. Kanyere. I wish to invite Kayaba Africa to take us there with one song. Thank you very much. Guide 
Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am with Thy power, mighty, hold me with Thy powerful hand. Arise for the entrance
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God is good. And all the time. He is good even in this moment as we gather to celebrate the life of our brother, colleague, a friend, somebody whose departure has left a mark in our lives. However, we gather this morning because we have faith in life after this physical life in this world, and therefore ours is not to mourn, neither to question God, but rather to say thank you for this man whom we can say he lived accomplished life. On behalf of Father Ibel, the parish priest, I'd like to welcome you all to this celebration, to this place, as we pray for the soul of Joroge Nani, and also as we pray for the family, for God's consolation. All of us, in different ways, we have been touched by his departure, but then we pray that through this Mass, we may be consoled, and that God, whom he served in different ways, may grant him eternal rest. And therefore, let us gather our thoughts together, we gather our minds together, and we pray in us giving to God for the gift of life of this great man who has called us from all parts of the, this world to come and celebrate his life. My dear ones, for us to participate to in this Holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge that we are sinners, but God is merciful. Therefore, we humbly request him to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. is always to forgive and to show mercy. We humbly implore you for your servant, Jeroge Nani Mugai, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
must be seated for the word of God. The first reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. On that day, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fat things. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 25, and the response is To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, o Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord, response, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Relieve this anguish of my heart and set me free from my distress. See my loneliness and suffering, and take away all my sins. Response, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Preserve my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for in you I trust. May integrity and virtue protect me, for I have hoped in you, O Lord. Response, to you, O Lord, be Second reading from Romans chapter 5, verse 5 to 11. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, Hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were yet helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, one will dare even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death, by the death of his son. Much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Not only so, 
but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Kindly arise for the gospel acclamation. is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowns, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and him who comes to me I will not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, but raise it up at the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. I know we have been here for some hours, but it's good in this occasion that we allow this great man, Nani, to speak to us. I have thought many times of the many lives he has touched to the extent that we find ourselves here a day in which we don't gather here to mourn, but rather to remember the event we had with him and as well celebrate what he accomplished. Of course, we have various perspectives and reasons why we are here, but I believe what has brought us here together is not just to celebrate his life, but also to learn something from him. I know there are some tributes that were read here. I read some of them and were as comical as they can be, remembering the events, the weddings of Joroge. Uh, but as well, we have the occasion to have this Mass, a moment that God is also speaking to us. Him, he has accomplished his work on earth, and he is gone physically from us. We have the opportunity now as living beings, as we learn from him, also to enrich our lives from what we are experiencing this moment. I happened to meet him in various occasions, and the last time we met, we had lunch together, and when I questioned him about his medical and uh, the journey he was going through, he said, Father, we are trying all is well. 
maybe a man you can say he was a little bit quiet in various ways, but he communicated a lot. Somebody believe who accepted suffering and had the will to soldier on and to conquer the disease. But as Christians we know, God has planned for us and his plan was that after this time, he would leave us and go back to the Father. I was over home to read from one of the tributes that one of his comical moments, he told uh, a colleague that after 50, you cannot take a loan. God is good. <laughs> because he may be gone, or he may be too busy to enjoy it. And here we are, that many years after we leave what he talked of, uh, maybe lightly, but it has come to be. I believe, looking at his life, reading the tributes, hearing from colleagues and family members, we can all together agree that he lived a complete life. Media ones, coming to the readings of today that you have heard, the first reading from the book of Prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is talking of a moment whereby God is calling us to be on top of the mountain where human suffering will be put to an end. My dear ones, for us to get to this mountain, we need to prepare ourselves. It's on this mountain where God has prepared a banquet for us. And he's inviting us to be participants of this good moment. And the menu of this banquet is a unique one. There is wine, God is good. On that mountain, God is providing the great things we can have. And on that mountain, he's promising us to have our sufferings put to an end. God takes it upon himself to prepare this banquet. And ours is to respond positively to this banquet. I was imagining myself thinking of this occasion today when this man has prepared this occasion for us and here we are gathered to remember and celebrate his life. As we are here now, God is telling us, I've prepared something for you. We need to gather the strength, the courage, and we climb this mountain. The question we can ask ourselves, are we fit enough to climb this mountain? Are we preparing ourselves to get there? And as you know, for you to climb, we have to be physically fit. You know, some of us, we, we, we are not fit, you know, the way we live. Uh, uh, I happen to be among those who um, uh, go to Subukia frequently, Subukia Shrine. I know most of you have gone there. There's a lot of enthusiasm when you're talking about going to Subukia and to climb the mountain and fetch the water there. But the moment you start climbing, to Naza Kuhema Kama Wanyama, God is good. Because maybe you are not fit. And therefore today, the first thing is telling us, if the banquet is on top of the mountain, we need to be fit. The question we can ask ourselves, how are we preparing ourselves for that feast that the Lord is preparing for us? How are we living our life today? Which mark are we leaving behind as we live preparing to participate in this feast that God is preparing for us? Our focus, therefore, is not just in this moment, but asking ourselves, in my Christian living, in my social living, in my life, am I preparing myself to climb this mountain? I was talking to mom, to Nani the other day, and she was reminding me the many prayers that have been said. I've celebrated mass for him also, in other places also. As we prepare ourselves for this great mountain, we had to go on our knees. Sometimes we don't remember this fact, but our life is in the hand of the Lord. He is the one who can take us through, and therefore having relationship with him is fundamental in our lives. As we carry on with our faith, we cannot do so in alienation to our faith. I tell my Christians, to be a Christian is not addendum in your life. It is not miscellaneous. It makes part and parcel of our life. And therefore, for us to get to this mountain, to have this feast, we have nothing else to do rather than to ask ourselves, how is my relationship with my God? How am I preparing myself? Coming to the second reading, Paul uh, writes to the Romans, 
He is telling us of who we are because of Christ. And Paul, right to the Romans, the first four chapters, he talks about our justification. That it's because of faith in him that we are justified. Sometimes, maybe we focus on our doing. And we forget about our being. I like using these two words because they help us to understand who we are in reference to our God. If we focus on my doing, and we forget about my being, being a human person, being a Christian, being a brother, being a priest, whoever you are, then your doing may be misplaced. And therefore, Paul is telling us, we are because Christ died for us while we were sinners. And I think this is a great message to us today, that he died for us when we were enemies, when we were sinners. And today, we can start a boast of our faith because of Christ. The question I can as well ask myself, if he died for me while I didn't know who I am, when I was a sinner, how am I living that gift that he has given me? He who loved us when you were enemies, who love us much more now, and will give us salvation. And this is because Christ accepted to die for us. And therefore, if this is situation we are in then, our being Christian is a moment of celebration. Our being Christian is a great gift that you're about, you're supposed to be proud of to celebrate because he offered his totality to make us be who we are today. And lastly, we have heard from the Gospel of John. John reminding us that Jesus Christ came to do the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? That whoever comes to him, whoever believes in him, may not go, get lost, but rather have eternal life. This makes us to understand that the will of the Father is for all of us to be saved. And that's why we are gathered here today to pray for the soul of this great man as well for ourselves because the will of the Father is that all of us be saved. And therefore, this gift which Christ has given us through his life, the gift of eternal life, is linked to one condition. This one condition asked of, of us today to contemplate the Son of God and to believe in him. It is a question of the contemplative gaze of a profound faith that directs the whole of human existence towards God. The gift that Christ has given us, making all of us be saved, demands of us to contemplate that gift, that life, to have our gaze on Christ. I like what uh, the writer to the Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 12 verse 2 says that we have a gaze on Christ who is the perfecter and pioneer of our lives. That is the call that you have been reminded today. I believe that this man whom we are praying for today look at that he had his gaze in Christ and that's why we have singled out moments that he touched many lives. The question maybe he is also forwarding to us, when our time comes and people gather because of me or because of you, what will they say? Whom did you touch in your life? Whom did you influence positively? This is a challenge to all of us who are gathered here today, that we can learn from Jeroge of what he did, that humble living that had an impact in many people's lives. Ours today, as we endeavor to live our calls, as we carry out our various chores, we ask ourselves, where is our gaze? Are we looking at Christ, or we, are, we have diverted our attention to ourselves? You know, Jesus is God who fulfills man's deepest desire, that is, the desire to live. He satisfies his vital desire of man on the condition that he believes in him, not only in words, but with the life lived, that Jesus is the Son of God. Ours is not just to profess with our lips, but we are challenged to live, to give an impact through this gift of life that God has given us. 
in the same gospel that you have read, chapter 6, we hear Jesus talking of on the last day. That phrase on the last day is very important with a precise meaning. It is the day in which the creation of man, our human existence here on earth, will end through death. But then from that moment, the death of Christ takes over. He grants us eternal life. It is the day in which the final triumph of the Son of Man over death will be celebrated. That's why we gather here, because through that passage from this life to the other life, our brother has the triumph of Christ in his life. Then Jesus will fulfill his mission through his resurrection by granting us a life, life that begins in this moment. My dear ones, sometimes as we live, we tend to think of that end moment and we put it as far away as possible from our thinking. The departure of Nani makes us to think of our departure too. How prepared are we? Maybe we might have thought of it looking at the event of his sickness, but really do we sit down and think of our final days here on earth. And therefore we learn from him to live the fullness of this gift of life that God has given us. One of the things that is affecting us and we don't live it is because we have fallen into the trap of procrastination, whereby everything shall be done later on. I think it's time for us to live life this moment and to live it fully because none of us knows when it can be our final moment here on earth. And based on this, I'm sharing something these days and I will share with you too. That's upon us to live the fullness of this life. If we don't do so, then other things may bring us together. And I was here three or two weeks ago for mass like this one. And I asked the Christians that day, and I'll ask you too today, do you know what brings us together as Africans? What is that that bring, brings us together? If you look carefully, we are brought together by two things. Two things. One is food. God is good. Food brings us together. The moment we have something to eat, we will come together. If food does not bring us together, death brings us together. Those are the two things that command us to be together. One, sometimes you have an option when it comes to death. I'm just asking myself and I ask you too, if none was to call us to have a feast with him, for whichever reason, how many of us will come? God is good. The Muslim is Christ. How many of us will say, I'm available, come? Some of us will go to look for reasons. But when he died, on Saturday, the number was surprising. Those who were there, we came in numbers. So death calls us, and we come together. And therefore, I'm telling people these days, let us have the habit of coming together and eat. Of course, the last time we, I met with him, we, we had Mukimo at mom's place. Um, which is so good. The question was, us who are living today, we keep on saying we will meet the other moment, I will create time, there is no time. But when you die, none of us will be sent an invitation. I can ask how many of you came here doing the invitation. You just heard of it and here you are. And therefore, one of the lessons we can learn from this man is that let us live life and we have, we have no mind, let us come together and eat together. Feel at which, when death comes, we will find ourselves coming by force. And therefore, that's a major lesson. And these days, we cannot plan, plan much because of the eventualities of life. But let us avoid that aspect of procrastination and avoiding making use of this gift God has given us. As one Latin says, goes, we need to cap diem, to capture the moment, to capture the moment and live to the fullness. When you look at the comments and the tributes that were on Twitter on Saturday, 
and Friday, most of you posted moments that you had with Nani. And even the tribute that you have heard indicated that moment. The question we can ask ourselves, do we capture the moment? I was impressed to hear uh, about his uh, tour to South Africa, to enjoy life, to go and use what God has given him. Some of us, we live very sad lives, very gloomy lives. We are there saving and saving and saving, and then you die, leave the savings. God is good. <laughs> this man lived the life. I, I, I saw those photos of land lovers and having fun. I asked myself, well, how many of us will think of that this year, I'll go somewhere and interact with my family. No, we are there buying plots and mashaba. And some of us even die without knowing where our, our properties are. Because we don't capture the moment. And the greatest gift God has given you this moment is the gift of life. The gift of life. And therefore, let us not waste our time, but live to fullness, but do so as Christians. You know, I remember uh, Christmas time in my parish there. I told my Christians, you're going for Christmas to enjoy wherever you go. Whatever you do, do it as a Christian. To move as Christ. Of course, I'm to go to various places. Eh? But we do so as Christians. The same message you can get, tell to our leaders here present. That whatever we do, we do so in mind of our identity, our identity as Christians, as human beings who are responsible. And therefore, my prayer for all of us today is that God may give us the grace to know and appreciate the gift of life, to know and appreciate the gift of our being, whom God has made us to be through his son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, may our being Christian, whoever we are, be the foundation of our actions. That whatever I do, I do so having in mind that I'm a priest, I'm a Franciscan, you're a husband to somebody, you're a wife to somebody. Whoever you are, that being that God has made in you becomes the foundation of your actions. And I believe this is what Nani is teaching us today whereby he used the gift God has given him to bring an impact. I'm aware of several interventions to some people who were challenged and they approached him. And in his own way, he would say, I'll try my best. I'll try to do it. You know, without minding so much uh, about tomorrow, you know, some of us may be a little bit stingy because not that we are poor, but because we have mental poverty. Mental poverty that makes us only see the dark, dark spot in our lives, the lackings. And I give a, a short story of when I was having my studies somewhere and I went for mass. And of course, God has given me uh, this Kiherere uh, Kiasi. So um, I preached. And then after the mass, one lady came to the sacrist and said, Padre, I predicato molto bene, però tu sei nero. That is in my other mother tongue saying, that Father, you have preached so well, although you are alien, you are black. That was in Italy. And I said, the only thing you have seen from this whole celebration is that I'm black, you know, now. So in the sometimes you are quick to spot those lacking moments of our lives and that negativity. That negative energy denies us the opportunity to embrace and to live the gift of life that God has given us. And therefore, let us recognize this, that God has given us the opportunity. We use it well as we prepare ourselves to climb the mountain of the Lord, where God has prepared banquet for us. What can I compare this departure of our great brother, friend and colleague to? And compare it with the life of academia, whereby all of us go to school, and there we are given various tasks to accomplish. And there we are promised that once you do this, we'll be able to graduate and go to another level. I compare life on earth, like pastors who have gone to school, and here we are doing our research, doing our various activities, and thereafter we are supposed to write a report or to write a research, and then we present it for marking 
and thereafter you have been told you have graduated, now you can go to the other level. We're in academia, academia of life. The question you can ask ourselves, how are you doing your research? How are you preparing yourself so that you can graduate and go to the other level? The means through which we'll get to the other level is through death. St. Francis of Assisi said that death can be compared to a sister. And he called death, sister death. Because through this sister death, we get the fullness of what God has prepared for us. The only thing I can ask myself today, how am I preparing this academia? How am I doing my research? How am I preparing myself? That when I be graduating, I'll be, do so, I'll be doing so with my head held high. Not I'll be being pushed or being ashamed of my results. And therefore, we pray that God was given this opportunity in this world, in this academia, that we may endeavor to do our best. That when that moment comes, we'll be able to participate in the banquet that he is preparing for us. Thomas if Jesus Christ. Tusimame tutoe sala zetu. We who stand here in life cannot really see the living God. We who pray here in life cannot really know his living presence as our brother knows him now. Let us offer our prayers to God as we pray for his soul. The Lord our God shall not lose whom he has loved. That whoever has loved the Lord his God shall not lose him, though he be torn from the hands of the living, though he travel past the rim of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. That death shall hold no terror for man and his dreams upon this earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord gracious As Hiroshima has risen from the ashes, our brother Njoroge Nani Mungai shall rise to his God. We pray to the Lord. Lord As Christ suffered and died, so shall we, and so shall we all love. And as Christ rose to oneness divine, so shall we, and so shall all we love. We pray to the Lord. Through, though death is an intrinsic as rock upon this earth, so is the joy of resurrection of man. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment and whisper to God those prayers deep hidden in our hearts. We now have recourse to our mother Mary, seeking her intercession as you say, Hail Mary. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. It's time for the offertory. What shall I offer to the Lord tonight? 
session. Tunashukuru kwa neema na baraka ambazo umetujalia. Hasa tunashukuru kwa zawadi ya maisha ya dugu yetu. Rafiki yetu uliyomjalia nafasi ya kuishi nasi. Tunakusanyika kwa ajili yake. Tukikusihi uweze kumjalia uzima na uhuru wa kwa mbinguni. Wale ambao wanahuzunika kwa ajili ya kifo chake, tunaombea neema na baraka. Ishara yetu ya shukrani ni zawadi hizi tunazokutolea tunakuwa kwenye nyekevu 
uweze kuzipokea nasi utuzidie baraka ya baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Jiroganani Mongai. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We raise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, by your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. for holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered England into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life for the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Agnolo, our Bishop, David Kamau, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, George Nani Mungai, Joroge Nani Mungai, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with us, Pastor Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
with the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind, but only see the word. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. It's time for the Holy Communion, and we're being reminded that the Eucharist is only for Catholics who have prepared themselves to receive.
pause for a moment and contemplate the mysteries of the Eucharist that you have received. We stand up for a prayer. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Joroge Nanimungai may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Kidogo. God is good. And I said, sometimes I question myself and ask how I live and how will it be. But I think today we have a great communication and I pray that uh, this uh, celebration of his life that started early in the morning and will continue till afternoon may give all of us two things. One, message of consolation that we are convinced that this man lived and that uh, he is in a better place. And secondly, that he may challenge us even at this moment of his departure so that we can ask ourselves, as I said, are we capturing the moment to live the gift of life that God has given us? 
So to the family, to all of you here present, to the Jumuiya that has accompanied Mum here, to the CLD members, I can see some of you from South Sea here present, may God console us, and the, that our faith may grow strong. My prayer is that us who are here present may recognize, appreciate, and live this gift of life that God has given us. With me, I came with my brothers uh, who reside with me in our community in South Sea, where I minister. We have with us uh, Father Edward Wabua. You can start that one there. Then uh, we have uh, Deacon uh, William Clemmy, who is with us. And then we have Samuel Dabuki, who is with us. And uh, we have a catechist from this place who is uh, guiding us. And myself, um, Father Francis Ekaniri. Uh, we all work at South Sea Parish, neighboring parish from here. And we got the opportunity, all myself got the opportunity to journey uh, with Nani to have some sittings. And funny enough, in all those meetings that we met, we were eating. God is good. <laughs> It was a moment of eating. You remember the mass we had behind there? We were just there having food. The last time we met, he found me at the place there, and we were again enjoying the gift of Mokimo and some few things given to us by mom. To the family, may God continue giving the grace uh, to brothers, uh, all those who related to him, that may this departure not bring you down, but rather make you strong. Again, going to my mother tongue, we have a saying that says, that not all bad things that happen in our lives are meant to bring us down. Some of these moments bring the best out of us. You know, sometimes this challenging moment strengthens us and brings the best out of us. May therefore this moment not bring you down, but rather give you that strength that you need to learn from him and soldier on. I'll now invite them see, to say a word, and thereafter I'll give the final blessing. Asanteni. Thank you, thank you, uh, Father Reverend Kanyere, for taking us to the Mass. Uh, I know we've been here for a long time, and after this, the family have organized some lunch, which we shall have at the MMC Asafo headquarters on Peponi Road. So I'd like to invite all of you, there is enough for all of us, we come and share the meal with mom and the family. Uh, as we come to conclusion, I would like to invite Willie, the older brother to Nani, to come and take us through shortly and very briefly in terms of the life and times of Nani. We shall be culminated with a video clip, very brief, and then I shall invite Mr. Peter Monge to come and give a vote of thanks then we shall be able to pass and back to Father to close the ceremony. William, kindly, thank you. Habari <laughs> zenyu. As you've heard, my name is Willie, or this, I write it as William, but it's Willie Ngure Mungai. Kanawiri Wanyinawiri. Mama Willie. 
I'm very saddened as I, sit, I stand before you people, but I have felt it's really important that I should tell you what happened uh, to the point that we are here. Munge has really helped me because he thought if I start saying it from my heart, I most likely may miss out some things. So we, we were able to put it down. So I'll first read it. And it says, Nani Njeroge Mungai was born on 22nd June 1965 in Tingana, Kiambu County. Throughout, li throughout his life, he never had any ill issues. This goes with many members of my family. We cannot remember him going to hospital. However, sometime in December 2020, this was a period where we normally have a family Christmas gift that is held by our children, and they're the ones that are normally organized for it. All there about, he started complaining of leg pains, and after a short while, he developed a slight limp. He underwent a number of tests at Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, and to the surprise of all, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I can say that even as we had a discussion with him, we did not consider it like a life-threatening program problem. This being, of course, that we know 90% of the cancer is actually treatable, the prostate cancer. He then met his family and discussed the options and the way forward, and therefore met the partners of MMC Asafo. A decision was made, and he immediately traveled to USA in January 2020 for treatment. This was more so for the reason that part of our family resides in there. So when we looked through his visa and travel documents were all ready, I have two of my brothers in the States, I have my dad in Seattle, and some of his friends are actually able to recommend a hospital out there. Nani started treatment at the Seattle, Seattle Care Center Alliance in Seattle, in the USA. He had sessions of hormonal therapy, and after about four months, four months, he briefly came back here. He then, he then traveled back to the US, and at that point, they were able to establish that the hormonal therapy was not working. They then commenced a chemotherapy session. In September 2020, he he actually sent me a message and told me, I think that the treatment that I'm getting here is not responding. And however, I am able to know that we will have the same treatment. I mean, Aga Khan is able to offer the same treatment. So he returned to Kenya and continued treatment under Dr. Asim Jamal at the Aga Khan Hospital. In October, the doctor, we went in there and we were having some sessions. One of the things that he always did, a day before we go for our chemotherapy, we would ensure that we go for blood works. And on this particular time, he says, okay, can we have the markers that are able to determine whether the chemo is going up or down? And in that month in October, we actually realized that the treatment that we was also receiving was not responding. It is not written here, but I should really tell you there is nothing as devastating when you have gone to the doctors, you know what is your problem, and the medication that they are offering is not responding to your treatment. So the doctor then asked us to wait that we could figure out whether we can have another treatment. In October, his condition started deteriorating. And on December 22nd, this is when the doctor had requested us to go so that he can evaluate us for a different regime. He was admitted at the Aga Khan Hospital and remained there until he rested. Much later, we actually found out 
as I said, 95% of the prostate cancer is one that is curable. There is a 2% prostate cancer that spreads through the bones, and it's a more aggressive cancer. It is aggressive in our nature because none of us, EK Morey included, expected the devastation that would happen within a period of three months. That is how my brother rested. We were with him throughout. Surprisingly, he was very courageous. He felt that he was ready. And at one point, I actually, I actually told him, I agree to all the wishes that you want and whatever you would want us to do with you. However, as your brother, you must be able to let me in. I cannot let a thing like a flu or any other condition watch a yo cancer yako ikuwe, lakini si yo homa ama izi zingine. He was agreeable and we appreciate for what the doctors did, but as life was, he has left us and left many of you who have had mom, auntie, and my cousins, and all my friends. Sema tu kwa heri, and we'll have to accept it as it is. Asante.
Good afternoon, everyone. God is good and all the time. My role is very simple here, is just to come and say thank you. Chacha, we are told uh, when you reach the age where you can, be a, you can say, speak a blessing, then you give, you're given these roles. But uh, I stand here on behalf of the family, of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mungai and the MMC Asafa family, just to give gratitude and to give thanks. And first, we are grateful to God. Uh, God gave us a life of nine, uh, made him a blessing to all of us, uh, gave to us a man full of wisdom, a man with a big heart, and for 55 years, God uh, allowed him to be part of the Mongai family, and for more than two decades, he allowed him to be part uh, of the MMC Asafa family, and we must be grateful to God for that. But secondly, we are also grateful to the family of Mr. and Mrs. Mungai, Mama Willie, the Baba Willie back in the US, I know they are watching us, Robo, uh, Willie here, and uh, Joe, Shiko, we are grateful for allowing Nani to be part of us. For us, we are grateful to you, even when this happened, you allowed us to step in and uh, do what is needful and uh, we are grateful to you as a family and may our God in heaven be a blessing to you. Uh, my brother Willie, you are a special brother. It's good I say openly, since Joel rested, you left everything to be your brother. The last moment I had with him alone, he talked to me for long about you. And it's good to say it openly. May our good God in heaven bless you that you left everything to walk with your brother. Thank you. Thank you, Willie. And uh, we are grateful to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Hurubugai uh, Kenyatta, for since this happened, we got messages, we got encouragement. We are grateful to the Deputy President, His Excellency William Ruto, for the words of encouragement. And uh, thirdly, we're grateful to Jomo Geshaga, the Private Secretary, to His Excellency the President. We are grateful to Dr. Joseph Kinyua, Head of Public Service and Secretary of the Cabinet. Message of encouragement that they sent to us as a family. We are grateful that they lifted our hearts and encouraged us. Jomo Geshaga, who is here with us as a Private Secretary of the President, Jasper and Buki, a good friend. The two of you were sent to bring message to us. We are grateful to you. We are grateful. We are grateful. Pass our regard to His Excellency and say, Prashkuru, Sana, may your God in heaven continue to bless him. Uh, also the same to the entire presidency. We are also grateful to many friends. Nani had friends in government and in the public sector and across board. We are grateful that OCS Betty Maina had to leave her busy schedule to be with here. We are grateful to OCS Charles Singer was here, Ambassador Nyoro. Many chairs and boards of many state corporations have come to join us and Asanteni, Asanteni Sana from the depths of our hearts. We have the family at Nairobi West, the people who knew him and Luca, all through the one encouragement to Joro. And we are grateful. Even after on the 14th, you reached out to the family, to Mama Willie. You were always there with him. And the family in Nairobi West are Santeni Sana. We have medics who played a good role. At the late December 2020, when Nani was diagnosed, and uh, he saw Dr. Burugu, Dr. Burugu of Nairobi, at the Aga Khan University Hospital. He did a good job. We are grateful to him. We are grateful to Dr. Asim Jamal and his team at Aga Khan. When Nani came back, they were there and they did everything possible that could have been done. And we are very, very, very grateful. Robo and Joe back in Seattle. Pass of gratitude to Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. He was diagnosed in late December 2020. 
An immediate arrangement was made and they received the memorial in January 2021 in Seattle. They did everything possible to manage and to take good care of them. Robo and Joe back there, please pass our gratitude to them also. Professional colleagues, the members of the bar, members of the bench, you've reached out to us, you've encouraged us. It's been our lowest moments as a firm and as, as brothers. You've reached out to us. We realize that it's not competition. We're not competing, but we realize the Bowman's, Mr. Paras, IKM, many law firms, Kablan, Stratton, HHM, we are no longer competitors, you are family to us, you reach out to us, you encourage us, send flowers to our farm, we are grateful brothers and sisters, we felt that we are part and parcel of our family in the legal profession. We have our senior councils led by uh, Senior Council Paul Moite, who's been here with us, uh, Lucy Kamboni and other senior councils have been here, have encouraged us, uh, the outgoing President Harvey, who is an uh, MMC alumni, Linda Kioma, who is now chairing the LSK branch carcasses, thank you. You've reached out to us. You've encouraged and lifted our hearts. We don't take it for granted. We are very, very grateful. MMC family, MMC Safa family, from the global office room from here, has been our lowest moment as a partnership. I have never seen the partners that low. You came in, stood up, and did what was right and encouraged us. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. We have many friends. Nazima, we are grateful. Professor Gatune, Asante Sana, you have worked with Nani through the tough times. We don't take that for granted. Uh, in hospital, you are always there. Asante Sana. Not many friends work with you in such a time. Nazima, we are grateful. Ambassador Gatume, Asante, Asante, Asante Sana. Uh, Nani was a special guy. He arranged his funeral committee before his death. And he said, these are the people who I want to take charge. William, William, Daniel Mungai, we call him D, and the mother, Nazima, Stanley Kinyanjui, Sam Akome, Samuel Kimani, and myself. Yet it was clear that take charge in the event of everything, anything happens. And when it happens, you all came rushing to the Aga Khan Hospital. I remember one of you was in a function where he was speaking and he left it and he came. As partnership, the partners could do nothing. It was our lowest moments. As a committee, we are grateful that you came in, stepped in, and took charge. We don't take that for granted. We are very, 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 very grateful. Uh, Don Bosco Church, we are grateful for hosting us and uh, for allowing us to come and do the, and have the service in this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. Uh, we are grateful, uh, Dr. Reverend, uh, Reverend Dr. Kanyeri, your team from the South Sea Parish, Asante Sana, man of God. Uh, you were always there for Mama Willie, always there to pray with her, always there to encourage her. Uh, man of God, on Asante Sana, we don't take that for granted. We are very, very grateful. And for everyone who is here, thank you for letting, leaving everything aside and coming to be with us. We and to come and celebrate the life of Nani. We encourage that our, our Njoro had friends from across the board and we don't take it for granted that you've come here. Mama, Mama Willie and Shiko are leaving this place knowing that Nani uh, had friends across the board and created friends who cared. And we, on behalf of the family, on behalf of the MMC Asafo, Asanteni, Asanteni Sana. And probably you can tell the person next to you, Asante, for coming to celebrate Nani's life. Uh, thank you, thank you very much to all of you. And may our God in heaven bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. For the soul of Jeroge Nani Mongai, eternal raise God to him, O Lord. 
may he rest in peace. For the soul of Jeroge Nani Mongai, eternal rest grant to him, O Lord. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.
Hakuna juae Muda na saa ya kondoka Tulio baki tujilinde Tujitakase tujitengeneze Haifa Bina kulilia Kanisa Bina kulilia Familia Inaomboleza Penda Vita Umeimaliza Simanzi sinetawa Melala kama utamka Kivi ni kweli umefunduka Umetuwacha Kama machozi angeweza kukwamsha Leo ungeweza kukwamsha Leo kweli Kwa hili Tutaona na mungu wakibu
Tigaware mwena wa kwa kedo Herera Thoshi ya koro ya kwa Nishigya ho tire Tiga wa chara geria Kajira katere Mothe meke kaga Ni gunyo ne wega Igoro ni ama oto mothe oe Wega i Wega ga mage ganya Uyure te inya Nani kyo goro yakwa Iyo ire geke no Niko menya denawe Wimudu iridi Waho nire goro yakwa Na ho nijega Gotire Kedo kiega Ige hoe ya chage Todo we Muhe ya ni waido Sio the jega Nane kio goro ya kwa Iyude te hinya Igoro de ama odo Mothe we Wega i Wekaga Maga ganya Uyude te inya Nane kyo goro ya kwa Iyo ire geke no Niko menya denawe Imudo uiriri Re ugo de gere ire Ige da go menye Ninyo ne te orya weka ga ara taku O mahi do ra gerea hi do ma ko menye Jia ro shia o shio de na shio ni da di me Ni goro de ama o do mo de we We ga i We ka ga ma ga ganya Uyure te inya Nane kyo goro ya kwa Iyo ire geke no Niko menya dena we Wimudu ui Igoro Goro ya kwa Iyo ire Geke no Neko menya Dena we Wimudu Iri Neko menya Dena we Wimudu Iri Neko menya Dena we Wimudu Tamazangu zimeni kwa mi 